Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm attorney Lilia Tika and today I have a special guest with me, Clint Casto, who is running for Oakland County Commissioner. Hi Clint, how are you? Good afternoon, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you so much. So tell us a little about yourself, your background. I know that you are, you're currently an attorney and you're of course running for County Commissioner. So tell us a little bit more about how you got to where you are today. Yeah, well, I was a prosecuting attorney in Wayne County sitting there with a group of my colleagues and friends and was uh, practicing law for probably about six or so years at that time. Mm -hmm. And in about end of 2011, 2012, one of my friends who now is a judge, he suggested running for state office. And he said, state representative, it's in the area that you live in. It's uh, a ton of your community members there. You would be a great fit. And in 2012, we embarked on this tremendous campaign. We ran for office. I'd never been part of office. I was never elected. Uh, we ran at, I was ran for the 39th district state representative. And we won in the August primary. And we were the underdog. And then in November, we were still the underdog. Won the seat and flipped it from a Democrat seat to a Republican seat. The Michigan House of Representatives then had a majority Republican, so I was in the majority. I served in my first term as the vice chair for the Judiciary Committee. And then come again in 2014, I ran again, and then I was named the chair of the Judiciary Committee. And in 2016, obviously we have term limits, so I did three terms, and I was the chair of the Law and Justice Committee. So I spent six years in the Michigan legislature, the first Chaldean to be elected. Yeah. from the West Bloomfield Commerce Township area. And I haven't even been a part of office. So did that political career. I ran for Congress in 2018, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I wasn't elected. And then I started practicing law again. I went back to the private sector. I do some legal work. I do some consulting. I have an amazing wife, two beautiful children, boy, Ava, uh, Ava my girl, my daughter, and Clint, my son, and another one on the way. So things are great. And here we are again. Now, somebody encouraged me to run again for a county commission seat in Oakland County. Now, what does that entail? What is a county commissioner? What is a county commissioner? Well, first off, in Oakland County, we have 21 commissioners. They all represent an area of about 60,000 people. And their duties are really the policy and budget area of the county. We have our county executive represents the whole county. But then you have to put in place those policies. What are we doing in terms of health care, behavioral health, physical health? What are we doing in terms of our roads, making sure they're fixed and which ones are priorities? Growth in terms of expansion for businesses to come in. And these policies get enacted by the county commissioners. But there's also that budget aspect. So we have to be fiscally responsible. Uh, as a Republican, obviously, I'm looking at making sure we're not increasing taxes. Absolutely make sure that we're spending our money. Our, actually, it's your money, the taxpayer's money, in the right way. So those are two of the things. And then the third thing is really constituent services. We have people that live in our county, our residents, our taxpayers, our children, our seniors. And we want to make sure that they're getting the best out of their county. And when they're not, that's what a county commissioner is for. So they can dial them and say, hey, I'm not getting the services that were promised. And that backstop is the county commission to ensure that those taxpayers, those constituents, those citizens, those residents are getting the best out of the county that they can. Absolutely. Now tell us a little about what you did as a state representative. Were there any laws or bills that were enacted or that you were working on or that you want to discuss? Just so we can get a little bit more background information as to what you've already done. Absolutely. You know, as the chair of the Judiciary Committee, we were the busiest committee. We had the most bills come through that were ended up being signed into law by Governor Snyder at the time. And we did a lot from work, working in the court system to looking at uh, things that, that in terms of uh, policies for individuals, criminal policy, making some reforms in our judicial system. As the chair of the Law and Justice Committee in my third term, though, we did some really tremendous work. One of them was because of a tragedy that happened at Michigan State University and uh, Larry Nassar. So we changed our policies in our state to have a better policy when there's sexual assault. It was a big, big deal. 
There's so many victims and survivors, and they really needed an opportunity to make sure that their voices were heard, but more important, that these things don't continue to happen. So that was a big deal, is changing how we look at sexual assault and reforming all the policies. Another major thing that I'm very proud of is looking at our mental health system and reforming it completely. There are so many dead ends for people, so many lives that uh, become hopeless because they don't have an avenue or, or a place to turn to. And then doors get slammed in their face and they get sent off. So we did tremendous reforms and revamped our mental health system to make sure that there are opportunities if you are, if you need help, whether it be from autism, whether it be from psychiatric needs, whether it's looking at our jails and our prisons that are full of people that really are sick and need help and are not the criminals that we've made them out to be. And we looked at that and we reformed so much in our state and, and I'm extremely proud of the work we did and, and everyone that I worked with to do that. That's amazing. And I definitely agree with you. I feel like our country as a whole, we, I don't want to say ignore mental health, the mental health system, or we don't actually do much for it to make it better. But that's great to hear that you actually worked on it, that you were part of the reforms, you know, especially within our community, the Chaldean community, we're, we're almost embarrassed to even address it. Um, any mental health issues. So it's amazing that somebody from our own community actually worked on something like that. Yeah, and, and in fact, I'm very proud of the work we did because it gives a lot of opportunities to get help. Yeah. And let's let's think about this. If you're sick, you want to go to a doctor and get help. Absolutely. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. Or if you go to a hospital, you want to make sure you're getting help to be better. Absolutely. And what we're doing is we're taking sick people and sending them back out sick. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. So we looked at that, we changed it, and we look at things like uh, substance abuse issues. And there are no boundaries for overdoses. There's been so many in the, in the Middle Eastern communities, in the Chaldean community. And these people are sick too, yeah, because there's something causing them to want to overdose and take these prescription pills and lead them on to something else, absolutely. like heroin or fentanyl, or whatever it might be. And we have to look at this and say, not what you're doing is bad, but you are not a bad person. Yes, we need to help you be the best person that you can be. And if there's mental health issues involved as well, we have to address that. Because if you go in uh, uh, for, for a broken arm and you have high blood pressure, the doctor needs to know about both of them. Yes, so these are the things that I think we have to work on from the top all the way down to the bottom and everywhere in between. This isn't a governor's issue or a state representative or a hospital's issue. This is everybody's issue. The family, our, our leaders, our community members, our healthcare system, our law enforcement agents. And we have to work together. Otherwise, it breaks apart and we see so much of the disaster that we've seen. Families losing loved ones, break, hearts being broken. Uh, issues with with everything that you could think of. Jails being full with, with people that really don't need to be there. They just need help. So, question for you about that. Now, let's say, for example, like I said, a lot of people in our community, they're too afraid to speak up. Maybe they're too embarrassed to speak up. Um, what can you do or what ideas do you have for individ individuals like that that can come forward and seek that mental help that they need. Even if it's something that they're embarrassed about, they're afraid to speak up about, they're not sure of, what do you, what would you like to work on to get them to come forward, get them to get help before they get to that extreme level where they overdose or where they start doing drugs that will end up killing them eventually? So the first thing is, especially with parents, is you have to put your pride aside. Because if this is your child and you're willing to do everything for them, then being too proud to acknowledge what's going on and an issue to, to address, then you're failing your children. So that's first of all. The second part is that there are many, many opportunities to get help. 
whether it be a rehab center, inpatient or outpatient, whether it be a local crisis uh, uh, stabilization center, if there are mental health issues, whether it be, especially early on, for, for young children, autism centers that are available that provide services, and deal with those with the doctor without being afraid, without being too proud or embarrassed. Because one thing I know for sure is they're not the only one. Mm -hmm. Whoever it is, you're not the only one. You know, relate it to if somebody was sick. If your child had cancer, would you say, ah, I'm not going to do anything with it? Mm -hmm. Heaven forbid. Or would you take them to the hospital and find the best Absolutely. oncologists and the exactly. best doctors? Yeah. And this is it's the same. Mm -hmm. So we have to get through the stigma. Because number one, you're not the first person. You're not the last. Number two, there are so many resources that you can take advantage of. And one thing, especially with like county commissioner is that we need our counties to invest in those resources Absolutely. and to make them available. And that's one of the things that I definitely would be working on is making sure that there are outlets for whether it be substance abuse treatment, whether it be mental health treatment, and to have it available. And to be convenient for working parents, but also convenient for that lifestyle to be able to, to drop them off, go to work, and then go pick them back up if need be. And, and I think the more that's out there, the better it will be for everyone. Absolutely. Anything else that you're planning on working on, what, if and when you do become county commissioner? Well, we definitely have to make sure that we're investing in our infrastructure and roads. Absolutely. I don't think we want to have anything happen to Oakland County that has happened in other areas, whether it be Flint or Macomb County, with our water resources, especially we're tremendous. We have all the lakes in Oakland County. So we have to make sure that we're protecting our infrastructure and our roads, we have to get back and forth to work without getting a flat tire or a broken axle. But what does that really mean? That means we have to look at the money that we're getting and spend it wisely. That doesn't mean reaching into your pocket for more. And unfortunately, a lot of times, there are other politicians or people on the other side that say, well, if there's an issue, then let's put it on the backs of taxpayers and take more money out of their pocket. Uh-uh. We have the money there. Now, let's be wise and let's spend that dollar the right way. You know? And I think that that's going to be key is making sure that we're spending every dime that we get from the taxpayers the appropriate way and not just spending it on special projects and a buddy system or whatever they're doing. You know what they did in Oakland County just recently? They said a no, they don't need public bids anymore for projects. You don't have to take the lowest you know, the lowest amount when someone bids. Now, what does that really mean? They get to select who their buddies are that are, they're going to spend taxpayer money on to do special projects. There's no transparency and no accountability. And that's what I would be bringing to the county commission. And I did it when I was in the legislature as a House of Representatives, as a state representative in the House of Representatives. And that's what the taxpayers want. We're spending our our money, we're paying taxes. What is it going for? Exactly. And how does it benefit the community as a whole, not just special project or a special developer or whatever it may be? Now, as county commissioner, how much power do you have over that or would you have over that? Well, we'd have a budget and we'd have policies that we'd have to vote on. Obviously, there's 21 of them. Right now, there are 11 Democrats and 10 Republicans. And hopefully after I win, we'll be 11 Republicans and 10, 10 Democrats. So we would be in the majority and be able to push that agenda of fairness, transparency, accountability, putting the people first. That would be, that agenda would be put forward. Any other ideas that you would like to implement or work on as county commissioner? Yeah, I think we have to continue the business growth and to make sure that we're an attractive place. Part of it is taxes. We want to make sure that we're attracted by keeping low taxes so that those that want to invest in our county would be happy to do so. We have uh, the talent that's here. We have to make sure that our students, as they graduate, they have an opportunity to live and work in Oakland County. So we want to make sure that that economic growth is still the driving force and, and it's going to be successful. We're here and 
you know, on Big Beaver Road in Troy. And there was significant and tremendous growth under Brooks Patterson. God rest his soul. But you want that engine to keep moving. You want that growth to continue, that sustainability. So that when people have high paying jobs and there's a talent force here, we can blend that with those that want to invest and create those jobs. Now, as county commissioner, now that things are changing to basically making everything virtual, as you are aware, probably here, our hearings are all being done via Zoom and all of that. For sure. Now, when you say you want growth in the business sector, well, how do you think things are going to look within five, 10 years from now, as far as businesses are concerned, as far as maybe possibly turning everything virtual or doing something with technology, um, you know, that will take away from having to meet face to face with others? Because I know that nowadays we're kind of afraid to do that mm -hmm. and it's only going to change from here. And I believe that technology will be a huge part of it. Well, we, we obviously need human interaction, whether that's physical or virtual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that goes to everybody's different strokes for different folks, right? right? But what we do need is to make sure that we have high-level talent that's coming in and creating those jobs. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you still need engineers. You still need architects. You still need people making things or making machines that make things. Mm -hmm. So with, with respect to that, even if it is a Zoom type of world, we still have all of these other needs. Mm -hmm. You still need somebody to make the car that gets you to the grocery store. You still need the butcher that gets the meat to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And you still need the per person who's making the clothes that get to the grocery store for you to buy. Mm -hmm. So I think in all those dynamics, uh, we're not going to slow technology down. And we want to improve it and expand it. And if we live in a different world, then we'd live in a different world. A lot of the big box stores that were selling clothes in the malls, they've been losing out for for all years because of online sales. And this is just one of those things you have to adapt to. And I bet, you know, doing a Zoom hearing instead of going to the courtroom kind of beats doing that. But you might get a better deal when you are in person. Yeah. Right? So there's a trade off, but we have to adapt and we have to go with the flow. And I think, you know, that's the type of world. But Oakland County is, is in such high respect with a triple A bond rating, with a balanced budget for three years. We don't want that to change because Brooks Patterson passed away and there's new people that came in and want their own agenda of picking a buddy who wins a bid and whatnot. No, we want to make sure that we're continuing that balanced budget, taxpayers first, increasing jobs, making sure that those resources are available to the constituents, whether they be in healthcare or otherwise. And that's what I would love to bring to the county. That's amazing. Now, any last words you'd like to say to our audience? What can they vote? What cities can vote? And, you know, hopefully they'll go out and vote. Yeah, I, I want everybody to vote. Whoever you're voting for, wherever you live, vote, vote, vote. Now, here are our primaries in Michigan are August 4th. And the general election is November 3rd. And you can vote in both of those. In fact, I encourage you to vote in both of them. Now, the district I represent has West Bloomfield, Waterford, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and the village of Orchard Lake. That's where you can vote for Clint Castell. But vote in every, wherever you live. Vote. How can you vote? Make sure you're registered. If not, call your county clerk or your city clerk, wherever city you live in. Give them a call. Tell them I want to be registered. They'll send you the proper forms. You can do same-day registration. So even if you're not registered, you can go in and register on Tuesday, August 3rd. And then you can vote by mail if you'd like. The clerk can send you a ballot to your house. You can fill it out at home in the comfort of your own home and send it right back. So what I want to encourage you to do is vote. Vote early. Vote off. Vote for Clint Castle. All right. Thank you so much for watching Spotlight. Don't forget to vote on August 4th. Don't forget to vote for Clint Kesto for County Commissioner of Oakland County. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.